Welcome to the next episode in the PISD GAF train. We're on our fifth stop, which is an introduction to Google Forms. To create a new Google Form, just go to New, and then scroll down to More, and select Google Forms, or double-click on an existing file. At the top, you'll see the different settings that you can choose from. Your first option is whether or not you want to require a Prosper ISD login to view this form. If you want it to be visible to those outside of Prosper ISD, then you need to unselect this box. Another option is to allow one response per person. If this is for a quiz or a test, then you only want them to be able to take it once, and this is definitely something you would want to check. You can also shuffle the question order. Just make sure that the items don't have to be in order. Like if you want to put their name in first or class period and you want that at the top, or if you have pictures with questions underneath them, if you click shuffle, the question and the picture may not be together anymore. You also get to choose a theme for your form. You can choose from pre-existing themes or you can customize your own. The one that I created there, I chose the header image and customized what the page looked like. Your final menu is where you can add collaborators. You cannot share with others that can edit your form. You have to add a collaborator and then they have edit access to your form. You can send the form, new, open, rename, make a copy, move to folder, move to trash. You can download it as different file types. You can embed it. You can email your collaborators, and you can print the form. Then you have your Edit, View, and Insert menus. From the View form, you can see your live form. You can also edit your questions or change the theme. And then you can insert the different types of questions or your layout. First, let's take a closer look at the question types. A text question will give you a field for them to type into. If you want them to be able to type quite a bit, you'd want to choose paragraph text. You can do multiple choice questions. You can do check boxes. When you do check boxes, they can choose more than one. So I often put check all that apply in the description area. They can choose from a list. You then have advanced options of creating a scale or a grid, putting in a date or the time for one of the questions. Your layout options, you can do section headers where it will divide your form into different sections. You can do a page break. This is a great way to do the choose your own adventure type activities where depending on what their answer is, they go to a different page in the form. You can insert images, which you can then put text with your image. And then you can also insert a video. However, it has to be a YouTube video. Your response menu. The very top choice is accepting responses. That means you can turn the form off if you don't want anyone to be able to fill it out anymore. You can look at a summary of your responses. You can view your actual responses. You can actually change where your responses will go. You can choose from a new spreadsheet. You can do a new sheet in an existing spreadsheet. Or you can check the box where it will always create a brand new spreadsheet. You also have the option of just keeping your responses only in forms so that it won't create a separate spreadsheet. If you create a separate spreadsheet in your Google Drive, you'll see the form, but then you'll also see a document, which is a Google Sheet, with the responses. You have your tools, add-ons, and help menus. The add-ons help you increase the functionality. A great one that I would recommend for math teachers is the GMath. It actually helps you type in those complex equations so that they look like they're supposed to. Your toolbar across the top actually gives you the options that were in other menus. It just makes it quicker this way. So you can go to edit questions, you can change your theme, view responses, or view your live form. When you send your form, you're going to have the link that you can share and send to others. You can click the embed button and get the embed code. You also have where you can shorten your URL. Just remember that here in Prosper, shortened URLs, goo.gl links, are blocked for our students. So you'd want to keep the long link to share. At the bottom of your form, you're going to have the confirmation page section. And this is what you want it to say when they click Submit. So you can give them directions of what to do next. You can tell them 
that you'll contact them soon or your grade will be in the grade book, but you just type in what you want and then you can show link to submit another response. Don't ever publish and show a link to your results unless you want the results of the form to be visible to anyone. And then you can also let them, before they click that submit button, see all their answers and um, make any editing choices that they want to make. This was a quick introduction to Google Forms. If you have any questions, let me know.